getting caught much uh, higher. Uh, but that's for another video as well. I think we can talk a lot about that separately. So int number of players num of players equals 32. So by default we we'll assume that there's 32 players and then we'll overwrite that. So then we go constant. I think I've just pasted yeah constant the word dw player count offset. So um, it's not really an offset. I don't know why I called it that in my uh, example, but whatever. Uh, so this is where it's an engine. Uh, thing so we go zero times so that tells us how many players have we got on currently uh, in this game and that will allow us to loop through only as many as we need to and then we go constant d word dw um, crosshair offset so this is an actual offset uh, let's, uh, I'm not going to change the name I'm going to leave this as an offset because I don't want to uh, go off track of my uh, notes and then I'll screw it up. So if we, what we found out for our crosshair offset was that it's at this distance away from uh, from the base address. So when we go to this address, we find out what are we aiming at, um, and then we have constant D word uh, DW entity uh, base. So that will store our enemy information. That will be equal to we stored it here, entity base. Yeah, that's the one. So copy that. D3241. And obviously we need to do zero times, which is brilliant. Okay. And we have that information. So we're nearly done with the boring variables and we just need one more. Um, there. And this will store again all the comments are on the final solution, so make sure to check that out when you get to it. Um, because obviously you can't write comments as we do in this tutorial. So, um, DW, is it D word? Yeah, it is. Um, entity loop distance. And all this basically means is how far are our enemies away from each other. Remember, very early on we found out that from the entity list, there are 10, 10 bytes away from each other. So we go byte, uh, 10 bytes, 10 bytes, 10 bytes, and we find out how far away from each other they are. And that gives us... Uh, the ability to loop through all our enemies and our own player to pull all that information. So what we're going to do now is a bit more boring stuff which is uh, declaring our structs and once we've done that we're very close to finishing we're only a couple of functions away from doing that. Um, so uh, let's go struct uh, my player um, do, 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 do. Yep, that seems fine. So my player, let's do capitals here. It's a global thing. My player, open, close, destruct, and we're gonna go my player, and then we're gonna go D word C local player. And remember, we did this already in the player. We did all this already in the bunny hop tutorial int team because we need to know what team are we currently on that's all important information and then int crosshair entity id and that's obviously the beauty that tells us who are we currently aiming at id um, go void read information that's our call that we use let's say my time typing is terrible uh, void read information and we're going to do that um, so that's fine what's wrong with that Oh yeah, missing semicolon. Um, so read information, and we go. Uh, oh, this is boring. I hate doing read process memories. Read process waste my time, uh, and then we go f process. Which did we declare at the top? Yeah, we did. Uh, f process dot. Where did we declare this? I'm trying to remember. Oh, I think it's part of the class, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is part of the class. I did it slightly different last time for some reason, which I'm trying to remember why, but it doesn't matter. F process dot handle process so boom handle yeah that's the one handle process and we go uh, so f process dot handle process which is fine and then we go p byte pointer and how does that go da -da -da -da. yeah so then we open a new one f process so you convert that to a byte or, or that um, Pass it into a byte, uh, p byte anyway, pointer. Uh, if process dot d word client, d word client plus player base, which is which we declared at the top. Um, 
and that gives us the information that we need. So what that will help us do is to find out where our player base is and from there we can read all that information that we want and then store that in local player. Uh, what did I call it there? Local player. Yeah, that's fine. And there we go. Size of. Size of. Oh, come on. Why are you... Sake. Size of. I think it's all small letters for some weird reason. And then D word. Because we're grabbing a whole address. Zero here. You can also do null. It doesn't really matter. So now we'll do a lot of copy and paste work. So, uh, because I'm, I make mistakes more often than I should. So F process handle process, and uh, I forgot to put the comma there. I should hopefully be okay. Yeah, good. So no, no, no. See local player. That's fine. And we'll just do some copy and paste job because um, we are slightly lazy, or I am anyway. So handle process uh, D word client that matches. Then we use we start using local player here because we want to find the address that's to that offset, not to the initial client address, if that makes sense. Uh, we want to go here, we want to go pbyte, uh, overwrite the whole thing, plus what we're storing here, we're, we're storing, we're going here, we're grabbing DW team offset, and we're doing that plus that, and we're finding out what team is our player on. Okay, and we store that in our team variable and team uh, team variable, which is fine, and that size of is an integer, so we need to store that number three or whatever number it is that that matches our player. And then we go, um, so write comments if you like because you're doing this. Uh, I, I guess it says team there anyway, so don't need to write that. So the next one that we need to grab is our crosshair offset. So dw crosshair offset, and what that stores is what well, who are we aiming at? Um, and we want to store that in uh, crosshair entity ID. Yeah, there it is. Uh, size of it's an integer as well. Yep, which makes it good. Um, good stuff. Crosshair, fine, no problem. Uh, and then here we have a final one, which is how many players are we dealing with? Now this, uh, I'm not too happy about the fact that I did this here for players, but it's not really a big deal. My guess would be to run this bit of read process memory on the timer and it sh really doesn't belong here on my player data but you know um, it, it doesn't matter a huge deal so the reason for that is num of yeah so as you can see here we're storing the number of players in the game and make sure you do so copy that ah fuck's sake I gotta stop being a copy and paste noob alright so f process dot um, and that will be the d word engine plus uh, and that will be DW um, player count. Yeah, that's it. Player count. Do we have that? Yeah, we player count offset. Uh, like I said, this isn't an offset, so I'll get rid of it quickly here. Actually, player count. Uh, get rid of that. Change that because that is annoying. Player count. Oh shit, that's wrong. I'm doing things that I shouldn't do. Player count. That's it. Sorry. So player count. That's good. I screw that up badly. All right. So that's fine, and that stores how many players are we, uh, is that an integer as well? Yeah, that's correct. So we store how many players are we dealing with right now. So again, if you want to change this to uh, a different area so it doesn't run on every loop, you'll make your thingy probably a tiny bit faster. And that's that for our my player function. That's that one complete. And now we just need to get our enemy data. So struct, player list, and that's fine. And then we go open that struct and we do d word c base entity and then we write int team because for this tutorial all we care about is what team are they currently on we you could also do a check to see if the excuse me if the enemy has health or not but i don't think it's necessary because once he doesn't have any health uh, the crosshair offset doesn't have his number anymore so int player so what player are we reading information for is the question here. Um, this can be done in a major variety of ways, but we we'll just follow this simple one, uh, make life easier for us. So reprocess memory, we want to go F process and handle process, uh, process the word client, and we want to go uh, entity player base here. So what we declared here at the top, where did I put that? Entity player base. Where is that anyway? Entity player base. 
Entity player base. Yeah, that's the one just after. Yeah, so it's DW Entity base. We want to use that. We want to go with that plus that. So with the D word client plus that. So we can find out where exactly is our enemy positioned. And we store the C base entity in that. Okay. So just moving down to that. Is that correct? That makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. You store C base entity on that. It's in the D word as well. Now, something we have to do here to make sure we can loop through all our enemies. We do that plus DW entity base plus, and now open brackets here, we do player. Um, player, where do we do player? Oh, yeah, our current player, because that is our ID of the player, times what we declared up here, which is DW entity loop distance. So entity loop distance. Probably shouldn't be a BW, doesn't matter though. So, what we're doing here is we're saying, grab and find out where this player's base starts, and then we do DW entity base, and then we do the player. So, let's say it's player one, it does one times 10, and it finds out in memory, so it starts in memory at 10 uh, bytes after the original C base entity address. So it starts 10. If it's second player, it'll be 20, third, 30, and so on. If it's our own player or the initial player, which is zero, it'll, it'll just be zero and it'll grab the first player's details. In the server, I'm pretty sure you won't be the first player, but it'll grab whoever's the first player and it doesn't really matter. So that way we can scan through everyone and store their details nicely. And then our final step will be to do grab an integer here again I'm really sorry about the copy and pasting but I don't want to make this tutorial incredibly long but um, hopefully you guys can do the same um, so the last bit of information that we're grabbing here is what team are, is our player in so um, are they in you know counter terrorists or terrorists so we're going to grab that so it's an integer we're grabbing here we're grabbing team change that to team and we want to know the, and the reason obviously we need to know that is because we're looping through the players and we, we don't want to shoot our, our own team do we so we only want to show, shoot at the enemy all right, so we want to go DW team offset here, which I really should have copied that one here because that one has exactly the same thing for everything. So F process and team, and we grab that from not D word engine, but we grab that from C base entity, C base entity plus DW team offset and team size of integer, and that's all fine. So I tend to noob it up when I do the copy and paste job because my guess is I made a mistake somewhere. Hopefully not. And all we want to do here is we want to go player list, list um, 32. So we're creating our little array here that stores up to 32 players. Um, and that's good stuff. So what we're going to start by doing now is we're going to create our main loop and then we'll create our trigger bot function and then we're good to go. So int main is what you want to do. Void main, it doesn't really matter. You want to go f process dot run process. And that what that does is it sets up our CSS and makes sure that makes sure makes sure fucking hell make sure that Counter Strike is running and that we can uh, hook into it. So then we say C out and say game found running uh, trigger bot um, and line. Do we do using namespace or not? I don't remember if we did that at the top. I don't think we did. Just go std c out. That's fine. Um, and then we make our while loop that runs forever unless we tell it otherwise. And we say get a sync key state. While well, get a sync, where is it? Key state, there it is. Uh, While well, get a sync key state, f6 key. And what we're saying, for as long as the S f6 key is not pressed, keep running the hack. And we did that, if you remember, on the bunny hop as well. Which is something that you guys probably want to change. So that closes that one, and that closes that one. What's the problem? F6 key. Did we declare it like that? Yeah, what did I do wrong? Oh, it's just one while not get sync key state. What are you annoying me for? Close one, which is fine. Close that one, and then close another one. What's wrong with that? Uh, define expected F6 key. Yeah, what's wrong with that? Yeah, I don't know what I did wrong there. Define. Oh, shit. Shouldn't do a semicolon on defines. My bad. Alright, um, I'm sure most of you guys realize that anyway. My player dot read information. So we're grabbing all our information for our main player. And then we're looping. We're doing a for loop, which is a nice loop to do. Um, and we're looping through all our players. You see number of players which we declared at the top. 
um, I++. So loop through all those players and check if we are aiming well actually we're going to pull the information for those players as well first playlist i dot read information so for anyone that's not comfortable with the race all that's happening is we're looping through uh, our enemies or all our players i keep saying this but uh, the base entity stores every single player including ours uh, so we're looping through all our players and we're saying um, get their information get their information get their information so that we can later compare it and see if our trigger bot uh, is aiming at one of our friendlies or not. So we run the function called triggerbot which we're going to create now. Uh, so we loop through everyone. All we're doing is ultimately just grabbing a ton of information and then uh, running our triggerbot to check if if anyone's in our target and then we shoot. So let's do our final function